My name is Tom Cotter, and I'm the host of The Barn Find Hunter. You know, a barn find, it's defined as a, as a, a forgotten, ignored, and neglected car, whether it be in a barn or a field, a carport, a garage, a warehouse. And I don't like to have leads. I like to develop leads on the ground, go drive down the road, kind of get a feel for the town. What I look for is not necessarily the hardware, the car. It's the story that that hardware uh, develops into. We're riding around looking for cars in a kind of a commercial area in Midland, Texas, and there's a field full of mostly Fords. The owner, uh, Tom Cross, who owns a swimming pool business, that's his private little empire of cars. He goes and drags them home, you know, and they've been there for 20, 30 years. And we just started to walk through, look at them, and I saw that car. And then we kept walking away and I came back to that car and we walked further, further and looked at this car, this car, and it came back to that car. And that's how we found that wagon. I got compound, I got rags, and I start buffing out this fender and I said, this car doesn't want to die. Dust is a big deal out there. Wind blows endlessly. So the good news is there's very little humidity. So uh, cars don't rust away, but even if a car is completely closed up, the windows are closed, dirt's gonna go in there. After 30 years, lots of dirt goes in there. It was the body that got me because it was in such good shape. Not perfect, but the original paint, it doesn't look, it, it didn't look like it had ever been hit or retouched or anything like that. Taking off all that old red oxidized paint, with a buffer and you get this red gook all over you. It did not let me down. That little patch led to a fender, led to the whole car. We put together a work team of McPherson College students from McPherson, Kansas, at Restoration School. And uh, we went over the winter. We worked on it over the quarter, a quarter of a year. Tom Cross and all his friends got involved gave us engine transmission rear end. His friends rebuilt it. He had a local hot rod club donate parts and time towards the project because it was going to a, a, a worthy cause. So we had really, it was like building a car from the ground up. If you can imagine like building a hot rod, you start with a body and a chassis and then you've got to add all the components. We had to do that because even though there was a front end there, it had drum brakes, it needed tie right ends, ball joints. So we rebuilt the front end and put disc brakes on it. In the wiring, the brake lines, the fuel system, fuel tank, the glass. I mean, everything had to be at least looked at, if not restored or replaced. They put disc brakes on it. We built the 390. They re rebuilt the, the transmission. We put Mexican blankets as seat covers. And I got to polish the entire car, not just the one fender. They put cool wheels on it, cool tires. It was a much bigger project than I realized that day when I first polished a little bit of the fender. But little by little, it came together. And a year later, we drove it from Midland, Texas to McPherson, Kansas, and uh, presented it to the school as a, a parts chasing vehicle. And uh, it's still there today. And interestingly, the things we didn't quite finish the way we wanted to. Students at the school have totally reupholstered it, new headliners, door panels, seat covers to factory specs as part of a graduation project. So, you know, it, it, from cradle to grave, we were kind of in charge of that car and it was one of the most rewarding episodes I can remember.